Good afternoon, Jamie sports fans, and welcome to yet another special edition of the Breeze TV Sports Desk. My name is Jordan Simmel, and as always, bringing you the special guests. And we have, who once was number three on the JMU basketball court, but was always number one in our hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, Kamaya Smalls, formerly of the Indiana Fever in the uh, WNBA, and currently with Use Basket Rosa down in Italy. Kamaya, welcome to the show. Glad to have you. Thank you so much for having me, Jordan. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, it's been a blast. I'm excited to be here, as always. Anytime we can get you in the Berg, even over the computer screen, I know that it's always something that you're looking forward to. So it's a, pl yeah. it's a privilege to have you on the show, and, and we're thrilled. Thank you. I appreciate that, seriously. Of course. Now, I mean, of course, the big, you know, not a college student anymore. That's, you know, that's the big realization. Obviously, a pro basketball player in Europe currently. Uh, you've only been in Italy for three days, which is why I'm amazed that we're even having this interview, but much appreciated all the same. But um, your first pro team with the WNBA, that was the Indiana Fever. And I grew up in the Midwest. I grew up about three and a half hours away from y'all, a uh, small little Chicago town. So I know a little bit about Indianapolis. I heard about the Fever for you and was thrilled. Um, but I want to know from your experience, what was draft night like? Just where was it uh, when you got the news? Who gave you the call? Who were you with? And what was the reaction? Um, well, draft night was my 22nd birthday. So it was on April 17th. And uh, I was with some of my, um, I was with five of my friends. Yeah, five of my friends. My best friends were there. So we were just all sitting around, you know, celebrating my birthday. It was all about, I told them, like, I don't want to make this draft thing like a big deal. Like, if it happens, that'll be, like, very exciting. But if it doesn't, like, we're not going to harp on it. Um, this is about me turning turning 22 and having more life and more blessings. Uh, so I was in Harrisonburg, actually. I, this was before I actually uh, had to move out and move on from the JMU life. I, um, I was sitting around with them, and my name came up on the screen, and we just erupted. Like, it was like, it, it was one of the best feelings in the world. And I think it made it even more special that I think that they were more happy for me than I was for myself. Well, so when the family found out, what was their reaction? Well, they actually set it up, like, perfectly for me. So my mom and sister was on FaceTime while we were, like, watching. And their TV happened to be maybe, like, I would say about five to ten seconds ahead of ours. So we're sitting there having a plain conversation, and all you hear is my mom scream in the background. And my sister's like, what, what, what? So they start hitting me on my shoulder, like, your name just came across the uh, screen. I'm like, no, it didn't. Like, I'm sitting here watching it. And then I saw my name come up under under Michael Jordan. And we literally, we could not stop screaming. Like, my mom and my sister were ecstatic. We well, said that was the night where you're out to celebrate being 22, having blessings. That's a, that was a pretty big blessing at the time, I would imagine. So Absolutely. The best gift I could have ever received. <laughs> Well, had you ever been in Indiana or Indianapolis uh, prior to getting drafted? And then, if not, when you were out there, uh, what became your favorite part of the city? All right, two things, Jordan. First, I was only in Indianapolis for maybe a max of two days, and I was stuck in quarantine. Uh, the bubble was actually located in uh, Florida. So we didn't. I didn't even really get the experience in Indianapolis yet. Uh, we were all kind of stuck in like the little, the, our little zone. Every team was down there. So everything took place in Florida. Uh, we played all of our games down there, but that experience was still one of a kind, you know, uh, the Florida weather. I haven't been down there since I was like a kid. So to experience, you know, just that being in an environment with Brianna Stewart, uh, Asia Wilson, Candace Parker, it was, it was amazing. When you did get there, I mean, it has to be, even for the veteran players, like you were saying with, with Candace and, and with Brianna, players that I grew up watching, these are veterans who, this is the first time that they've ever undergone anything like this. this. This whole year has been unorthodox, especially for pro athletes. But for a rookie to come in, and this is the first thing that you're going to be experiencing then, did you get any kind of maybe advice from the veterans and then – did you ever work with anybody even outside of your team just to kind of adapt to life in the bubble? Um, my window was very short at that time. So I was there for maybe like two and a half to three weeks. So um, I didn't get the chance to experience that many vets from other teams. Uh, 
but I definitely, I definitely got a lot and I absorbed a lot from my own team uh, within itself. Candace Dupree helped me out a lot. As you know, she's been in the league for maybe around, I think this was her 15th season. So learning from her was great. Uh, Kelsey Mitchell, she's been in the league for, this, this was her third year. She taught me so much about being at that two spot. Tiffany Mitchell, this was her fifth year. She taught me about diets and strength and stuff like that. So it was good. I, I definitely got to absorb my own team. I wish I was there a little bit longer to like learn from other people, other vets. Well, there's always the chance that, you know, days like that are still to come and we pray they come for you, obviously. Um, but right now, at the moment, you're in Italy uh, playing basketball out there. Could you describe what the experience was of Italy was going to become uh, your new basketball hub and the travels out there? And um, so far, what life has been like out there for you? Um, it's, it's, it's good. It's as best as it can be right now. You know, um, my team and my coaches are very welcoming and helpful and patient with the stuff that I have going on. You know, I had to, I had to make the very quick transfer from the WNBA plays to their plays. Um, I'm learning the Euro game, you know, so it's definitely different for me. Uh, like, you know, the time difference is very different. It's 930 there, it's 330 here. So I'm still working on my sleep schedule. Um, trying to find foods that I like and stuff like that. So I'm working on, you know, definitely a big step in growth in my life. So opening my eyes to new experiences, that's all I could do at this point. Now, had you ever been to Europe prior to um, heading out to Italy for basketball? Yes, actually I did. Last year, my senior year of college, uh, Coach O set up a trip for us to go to Europe. We played in um, Belgium, Amsterdam, and uh, it was called Hint. Hint. <laughs> and uh, it was a great experience, you know, uh, very different from the States, very different. Uh, so that, that definitely gave me a taste and got my feet wet for this field of basketball. That's great. And I'm glad that you brought up uh, Coach and, and Madison again, segue into this. Have you still uh, reached out even to any uh, colleagues, teammates, uh, just friends, coaches at Madison, and then vice versa? Have they done the same to you since you've gone through um, Absolutely. Coach O talks to me all the time. Uh, when I was in a wobble, he texted me at the every single game, gave me feedback, let me know what he thought, uh, told me, like, keep keep my head up no matter what it was, uh, whether it was good or bad. You know, he, he has always let me let me know, you know, the real stuff. Um, my other assistant coach, Coach Langford, she hits me up all the time asking if I'm okay, asking if I'm good, how am I doing? Um, and I talk to a lot of my teammates a lot, actually. I talk to uh, Jalen Caradine, uh, Kiki Jefferson, uh, Maddie Green. I talk to them as much as possible, you know. I like to still be involved with the JMU environment. I want to know how the team's going, how pickup's going. I want to know, make sure they're working as hard as possible. Is there any chance that when, uh, you know, inevitably uh, sports do come back to JMU right now with uh, the fall, everything got postponed um, at least until the spring. But uh, just last week it was announced that November 25th, the green light has been given for college basketball to return. Is there any chance that you might want to come back down to that brand new uh, Union Atlantic Bank Center, check out a women's basketball game over there? Absolutely, 100%. That's always been in a plan. Um, Coach O always shut me down, though, because he's like, no, you won't, because you're going to be playing overseas. No, you won't. I've been telling him this since senior year that I was coming back to see a game in that place. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm so happy for them. I'm so happy they get a season and they get a shot at it. Um, I really hope they're working as hard as possible. You know, I want them to keep building and I want to see them blow the roof off of that place. They had the chance to, women's basketball has been fantastic, at least since I've gotten there. But I know that uh, the competitiveness that y'all always brought to the court was, mm -hmm. just, it was top notch. And my opinion, best in the state, most fun to watch as well. But I know that um, every time that I got the chance to interview you, at least for Bree Sports, and then even now, Coach O's name still comes up. I know that you two have a pretty special relationship. What is the relationship that you have uh, with Coach O, even now when you're not here anymore? Um, you know, Coach O, that's my guy, and I always tell him that. Like he's he's my guy. He uh he ch he changed my life. He gave me he gave me so much. Um, without him, I wouldn't 
have probably even been at JMU, even with uh, Coach Brooks still being there, you know. Uh, he was the first one to see me at uh, Washington, uh, maybe my junior year of high school. And he specifically pointed me out. He called me all the time. And I say, when he when they uh, first found out about the coaching switch, he literally would call me like, Smalls, you sure like if I get the job, like you're still gonna come, right? I'm like, he really wants me. Like, I'm definitely, I'm definitely down with you, Coach O. So um, I feel like it's the same thing. I feel like everything he did to get me there, he does now, you know? And I feel like that's important. He didn't just let me go about it and just, well, she's out of my hands now. So it is what it is. Uh, he stays in constant communication. Like I said, he gives me constant feedback and I love it. You know, I listen to him very well and I try to uh, take his advice always and apply it to the game. And has this blossomed into more than a player coach relationship? Is this family now? Absolutely. A hundred percent. I used to always tell him, uh, feels like he's my dad. <laughs> well, Kamaya, I'm, uh, we're, we're thrilled for you out here, not just me, but everyone, um, not just the sports desk, Breeze TV, uh, we're so proud of you and, and, and wishing you well. I guess the final question that we would have is just if there is anything that you would want to say amidst all the craziness that's just going on right now um, in Harrisonburg, amidst COVID and, and online switches and everything, if you have a message or um, even a shout out that you would want to give to uh, uh, campus or to anybody on it. Well, first of all, thank you guys, as always, for your support. Um, all of the love and all of the, the, the support has definitely pushed me to my best ability. It has definitely helped me grow. And just feeling like I have the support of a whole city is kind of amazing. So um, I appreciate you guys for that. And uh, with this COVID stuff going on, please, guys, just be safe. Um, play, play your cards right. Um, it's a tough time to be in, and I know your college students and that you want to live your life, but – your safety is much more important than anything. So don't do it for you. Do it for your parents and, you know, the older people that live in Harrisonburg. Uh, stay safe. Uh, live life to the best of your ability and just, just do it. I like hearing the just do it. And then on your end, what's next for Kamaya Smalls? The pro career is still going. Uh, that work ethic we know is still behind you. What are your aspirations right now for your pro career? I'm still growing. I grow every day, you know, uh, whether it's studying film, whether it's, I actually just really, really, really got into reading the uh, Kobe Bryant Mamba Mentality book. And um, I'm loving it, you know. Uh, I kind of breezed through it with those airplane rods that I had, but like I find myself going back to a lot of pages, rereading, just, just studying the game, figuring out how I can be even better from yesterday, even better from an hour ago. So um, it's about growth right now. You know, I'm gonna come out, I'm gonna try to do my best. I think my first game is actually tomorrow. So I'm trying to just grow, figure out, get feedback and just keep pushing up. And have you kind of brought that Mamba mentality to your new team? And is that a part of, I mean, rest in peace uh, with Kobe Bryant. We, I think it's safe to say that it's an absolute tragedy what happened to him and um, he and his daughter, um, God bless them. May they rest in peace. Is the mama mentality, is that something that you've kept as a part of your game, uh, not just through college, but you're bringing into the pros as well? Absolutely. Um, I've never been, I'm not going to sit here and act like I've been like the biggest Laker fan. I've never been like that huge Laker fan, but I've have always been a Kobe Bryant fan. Kobe is, he's inspiration. He's strength. He's coverage. He's the ultimate mamba like it's it's insane and like when you can pick a man's brain like that when he allows you to be inside his brain and show the love that he has for this game the dedication that he has for this game it's amazing it's it's like untouched so rest in peace Kobe rest in peace Gigi and um I'm praying for I'm praying for his family every single day every single day likewise well Kamaya thank you so much for your time please stay safe out there stay strong keep fighting we love you and one, any final words you want to give the JMU campus? I love you guys too, as always. And go Dukes. Go Dukes. Thanks for checking out the Sports Desk, basketball fans. Take it easy.